Shalom my friends, they're across the world from here in the old city of Jerusalem. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, if at any point you can't hear me, just write in that you're having a hard time hearing me and we will try to work that out. But I'll, I'm going to stand as close to the microphones I can. I'm here in the old city of Jerusalem and what I want to show you is really what happens on a day-to-day -day basis here in the holiest city in the world. Now, Jerusalem is a very big city, and as you know, it was uh, it was united, all the different parts of Jerusalem, in the 1967 war. And I'm here not only in the holiest city in the world, but I'm here in the old city of Jerusalem, so the holiest point in the holiest city of the world. Uh, now, what's so special every time I come to the old city is that it has the same floors, the same walls that have been here for thousands of years. Behind me here, you could see, uh, these are the original holes from the Greek, the time when the Greek Byzantine period, this was a main thoroughway uh, that was built 1700 years ago and it's still standing today. If you go under that wall, uh, if you go under through the through that gate down there, you'll get actually that we made this ancient street that was used 1,700 years ago. We've given it a new life in order to use it today. That's actually part of what's called the Jewish quarter. The old city is divided into four parts. The Jewish quarter is the place that's really open to all different faiths. Right now, you see a group maybe from uh, Korea. Where, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Houston, Mexico. Houston, Mexico. Oh, Houston, Mexico. Houston South Texas. Houston. Welcome to Israel. Thank you. What you see going on here are people from across the world, from all different faiths that are coming here to Jerusalem, the city of peace. Because that's really what it's intended to be. The city of Jerusalem, although we see a lot of fighting and war, unfortunately, this is intended, and it ultimately is, at its core, as its root, the city of peace. And so what you see here are tourists from Coming around. You'll see soldiers, you'll see soldiers coming here, going through. We're going to go walk through the old city now. I'm going to take you as I walk through the old city and we'll get down to oversee the Mount of Olives and the Western Wall. So come with me as we go explore the old city and see all the different parts of it. You'll see worshippers, people still wearing their phylacteries, their talit, their prayer shawls, going to pray at the Western Wall. You'll see a Jewish, Christian, Muslim from all across the world coming to the old city to walk in the place of our forefathers. So let's go walk. Here we're by the uh, what's called the Cardo. That's the main street where they still today have shops and different, uh, it's called the Shuk, a marketplace with different things from all across the world for all of the different pilgrims to buy food and water and even different shawls, different Judaica, different items. And now we're going to go walk towards the western wall. So we're going to go walk here and then you're going to oversee the Mount of Olives. It's a beautiful, beautiful sight. So stay with me as we go and explore the old city. You'll see the surroundings. This is actually a place that you see a lot of chayalim. Uh, you see a lot of soldiers come through it as well. And they enter the army and they by the Western Wall to remember what we're here for, what we're fighting for, what we are unfortunately hated for. This is our holy spot. Actually, one of the only spots in the whole world that we consider holy is the land of Israel. That during this week's Torah portion, God promised to Abraham's son Isaac. It was just yesterday on Shabbat that we read that Torah portion of Lech Lecha when God tells Abraham to. And Abraham, it was before he was Abraham, he was just Abram, and he took Sarai, it was before she was Sarah, and he went to the land that God will show them, and they took Lot, they took all their people that they welcomed into their home and told about the one God, and they set off for Israel. And what's amazing is during this week's Torah portion, we meet amazing characters. We meet Malchit Tzedek, who was the king of Shalem. And what does that mean? That's the Malchit means the king of Tzedek means and he was the king of Shalem, which means completion. That specifically for what's going on during this day and age, we have a lot to learn from that. When we rule with righteousness, with justice, we will have a complete kingdom. You can see here all the soldiers that look very interested. These are the heroes of Israel from Israel. That they're all here learning about Jerusalem, learning about 
country that they stand on the borders and protect me and my children and protect you when you come to visit. This is where the soldiers come. This is where the soldiers come to learn about it. And when they go down uh, to the Kotel, to the Western Wall, they're handed two things in their hands, which is amazing. They're given a gun and they're given a Tanakh, a Bible, a, a, a prayer book and a, and a, uh, and a, and a Bible. And, and their Mifaked, their head person, says to them, we're giving you a Bible and we're giving you a gun. We hope you'll only need to use one of them. And that is what we pray for here in Israel. And so what's amazing is that uh, this is the land. What you see behind me, this is one of uh, the ancient synagogues that has been restored. Where I am now, I'm in the main, what they call a kikar, a square. This is the main meeting square as we go down to the Kotel, to the Western Wall. All walking through a Jewish second, where people aren't Jewish come walking through. Also, we just saw a Christian tour group from Mexico, from America. You see all different people here, and you see the soldiers, and you see all different people because this is the old city of Jerusalem, the land of Jerusalem, is the place that is so historic and biblical when uh, when there was the sacrifice of, of uh, Isaac right that he was almost sacrificed and he had to go where did he go to to Har Moriah the mountain of Moriah and when God said to Abraham get up and go to the land that I will promise this is the land that he was talking about this is to the space the temple wasn't built yet when Abraham went and came to Israel and came to Jerusalem and saw the land. And what does God say to Abraham? Get up, kum, go and walk across this land that I have given to you and your people. And imagine that. Imagine how hopeless Abraham must have felt uh, before he heard this word from God. He was old. He was in his old age. He didn't have any children. He didn't have any children. And meanwhile, he thought he went and he had a different, he conquered different lands and he was very rich. And God said to him, don't worry, I'll take care of you. You'll never need to worry about being poor. You'll always be rich. And what does Abraham say to God? Abraham says, I'm rich, but I don't care about that. I want children. If I move out to what's it worth? And that's when God comes to him and says, I will show you. Go outside. Look at the stars, God says. Puts his hand around Abraham and says, look at the stars. Look how beautiful the stars are. Could you count how many stars there are? Well, that's how many your children will be. Go look at the sand of the earth. Go look at that. And if you can count the, the amount of sand on the beach, that's how many children you will be. And imagine the hope that Abraham fell down on his face and he started praying to God, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for giving this to me. And he started laughing. Who eats hak? And that's why Isaac's name in the Bible is Yitzhak. Because when Abraham heard that Sarah was going to bear a child in her old age, he started laughing. And so Yitzhak, Isaac, is called literally laughter. And it was about this land. This is what Abraham lived for. This is what he was promised. And so many people ask, how could I tap into the promise of Abraham? This is something that it says is a covenant forever between God and Abraham through Sarah's child Isaac. And he says this is a covenant forever. The Jewish people will have this land forever. And how do the other nations tap into this? Well, he says this is this week's Torah portion that we learn about Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless the people of Israel. And so for all of you who have blessed Israel in prayer, in action, in advocacy, this is your source of blessing as well. Because it's specifically in Genesis 12, 3 that God gives us the ability to give blessings. That we learn, uh, what does it mean? What does it mean when God says, I will bless those who bless you? Well, what it means is that Abraham and through man and through our actions, we have the ability to bless each other. Before that, it was only God who was in charge of giving blessings. God blessed uh, Adam Harisha. God blessed Noah when he told him to build an ark. But up until Abraham and the promise of Genesis 12, 3, we didn't have the ability to tap into the blessings or to give each other blessings. And once that happened, that God said, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you, God put it into our hands. Do we want to tap into God's blessings or do we want to tap into God's curses? It's in our hands and that we have to decide. That is the beauty of this land. 
that is up to us. We see so many promises. If you listen to God's commandments, there will be rain, there will be prosperity, there will be peace. And if you don't, well, bad things are going to happen. So I'm going to take a second and show you what you could really see is the bridging of old and new. You see the ancient stones of Jerusalem. You see these ancient arches of Jerusalem. And what you also see are coffee shops and pizza stores. here, I think about how all of the nations came and Aliyat HaRegel, walking down some stairs now, uh, you see how packed it is, it's amazing, people say, is Israel safe? Well, look around, look how packed it is, people enjoy it, look how safe it is. This is, this is what life is all about. And so, uh, I think about as I walk these streets, I think about Aliyat HaRegel, how people came from all across the world, all different nations and all across Israel, to take part and go to Jerusalem. You see all different here. And so people from across the world did exactly what I'm doing now, walking down through the old city in order to get to the Western Wall, which was the temple, in order to bring their sacrifice. That the path that I'm walking now. Let's stop for a second here and see the see the see the view that I'm walking in now. You could hear music in the background. You could see over there is the Mount of Olives. You could see these ancient structures here and a young couple just sitting amongst them, hanging out, talking. Sometimes when I see this, when I see this view, sometimes when I see this view, when I see these stones, when I see the people and I hear the music, I think of the words of our prophets that were prophesied exactly in this spot that they said, the dead bones will come alive. The dry bones will once again have life, that God breathed his breath of life into the dry bones and they will walk once again. And I think about the thousands of years that there was no life here in Jerusalem. There wasn't a very big Jewish presence. There weren't tourists who came from across the world. And now this, the land, the street, the air, the view, these are dry bones that have come to life. God has breathed his life into Jerusalem. And that's what you're seeing. This is the breath of God in Jerusalem, through the people, through the tourists, through the soldiers, through the worshippers. There's this view here that's thousands of years old and a young couple sitting and talking to each other. This is the beginning, just beginning, of the prophecy being fulfilled. Of and we're going to continue to walk down. There's a lot of stairs here, hundreds of stairs. We're going to continue to walk down these stairs. You'll see people playing music. You'll see people asking for charity. You'll see lots of tourists walking up and down. And then I'll stop down below and I'll show you a little bit more of the view. But these are the stairs that people go to in order to get down to the Western Wall. So come with me. And all around here, there are houses. There are Jewish people who live here. There are places of worship. There are different synagogues and yeshiva, places of worship and learning. Everywhere around here, the streets, the air is literally filled with holiness of the word of God on everyone's lips that are here. Whether it's studying or learning or praying or just talking to each other, that's the word of God. The word of God is being here together in Jerusalem, all different kinds of people, together, unified. And that's exactly what it is. So this is very cool. Here, I want to show you something very cool. All right, come with me. Okay, so a lot of you ask, is Israel doing anything to rebuild the temple? And that's a very uh, interesting question and one that's not so easy to answer. The Jewish people are always ready to rebuild the temple. We've been praying to God to rebuild the temple, the third and eternal temple from the time the second temple was destroyed and we were exiled. That has been the prayer on our lips. 
O oh Lord, bring us back to Jerusalem and return us to the days of old, when the temple was built, when we could bring sacrifices, when we could dance, when the Kohanim, the high priest, would be doing their, uh, their work in the temple and they'd be wearing the beautiful garments and that the Levi'im, the Levites, would be singing and singing words of praise to God as the Kohanim, as the high priest and the priest did all of their work. We've been waiting for that day, but there's two different streams of thought. One stream of thought, and it's the same actually uh, question that arose that was uh, that that was asked when the modern state of Israel was established. Do we have the right as people, flesh and flesh and bones, to establish a modern state of Israel, or is it something that comes from divine? And so we put all of our work into it in order to establish the modern state of Israel, and God blessed it. And then we know this is what God wants. God is blessed. We have a modern state of Israel that has defied all the odds in order to survive the 1948 war, the 1967 war, when we're a new country without an army, and suddenly all of our neighbors who are established Muslim countries with huge armies come and attack us that God put down his hand of kindness and said he saved the Jewish people. Hatsileni uh, me'adam, we say, that he saved us from man because God is bigger than any man. God is bigger than any army. And so there's one part that says the same thing with the temple. Well, there's one part that says we should be rebuilding the temple. We should be working with the temple and then we'll see if God's uh, holy presence dwells there and there's another stream of thought that says no only God could rebuild the temple only God could rebuild the third and eternal temple and it will happen in a divine way well we know exactly where the location of everything is we know that where the Kodesh Kedoshim the Holy of Holies was is exactly you see people taking pictures this is a tourist site where I'm at also so you see a lot of action behind me and you might hear a lot of action also but we know that the Holy of Holies which we need in order to rebuild the temple that the high priest only on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, goes in and brings sacrifices. That's the holiest place in the world. We know that the temple service isn't can't be done in Chicago. The temple service can't even be done anywhere in Jerusalem. It has to be called, it has to be done at a specific location where the first temple stood, where the second temple stood, and it's the same place that the third temple, God willing, maybe soon in our day, will stand. And so what happens? Right now we have a mosque on top of that. What's called Al-Aqsa, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, is standing right on top of what we know is the Kodesh Kedoshim, the Holy of Holies. Exactly where the temple was is where the mosque is. So right now we can't really go and rebuild the temple. Uh, and so what we are doing, there's something called uh, the Temple Institute, is rebuilding all of the artifacts to use in the temple. So when the temple is rebuilt, we will have all the artifacts for the temple ready in order to use them. We won't have to start building them because there's very, when you read uh, kind of the more detailed parts of the Torah, it goes through exactly what has to be made and done and the exact measurements and the exact material in order to use it in the temple service. And so behind me you see a huge menorah that's made out of pure gold that is made exactly according to the requirements that the Torah outlines that you need for the temple service. This menorah right here is ready to be used in full service. And that's what's overlooking now the old city, the Mount of Olives, the Western Wall, and where we know the temple was built. So uh, we'll let this tour group now do theirs. <laughs> May I watch that? From Missouri, the state. From the United States. Missouri. Missouri, beautiful. All right, welcome. Welcome to Israel. <laughs> All right, we're going to continue on. This is a beautiful overview of the Mount of Olives, of the Old City. You'll see the Western Wall in a minute. But this is a menorah that is ready to be used in the temple service. Now all we need is God's Shechina, God's uh, Holy Spirit, to come down and dwell and fill the space of where the temple was, rebuild the temple, and we'll go and we'll have the high priest lighting that menorah. As we say, may it be soon in our day. So come with me. Wow, look at this view. I'm going to go in front of you here. Look, look at this view here. This view here, what you're seeing. Here, maybe stand over here. Is that jacket? 
There are thousands of people buried on the Mount of Olives. And as you know, you could look, if you don't know them, I encourage you to go and look through all of the prophecies that take place from the Mount of Olives. It's a holy space spot. It's called Har Zetim. Uh, right there, there's a lot of huge, very, very righteous, very, very holy people that are buried there. It's right outside of the old city walls, right where the temple was. And so behind me, you can see um, there are two, I don't know how well you could see in the video, but where all the graves are. That's the Mount of Olives. There are two little, uh, you could see tour buses, some blue buses. That is the Mount of Olives where they're going, and they could see the back entrance. I think, uh, what gate is that there? The eastern wall of the old city that from the Mount of Olives they could see the eastern wall and the eastern entrance to the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, and then and then right behind me, right here, you see over here, this is part of the western wall. And right behind it is what we were talking about where the Holy of Holies was that now there's a mosque. You see the, the golden dome that's called the Al-Aqsa Mosque that many of you have heard about. It's a very political place because on one hand Israel has sovereignty over all of Jerusalem and on the other hand we've given over control of the mosque to uh, the Waf who doesn't let, who they don't like for Jews to go in there at all into the Temple Mount at all. And when Jews go into the Temple Mount uh, you're not allowed to pray. And so it's a very, very uh, scary. I mean, if it wasn't, if it wasn't scary, I'd say it was funny to not allow someone to pray at the holiest place in the world. That you're not allowed to pray. Jews who go up to the Temple Mount are not allowed to pray. And so they let Jews go up there. But if they see you moving your mouth in prayer, you'll be kicked off. You could be arrested. You could be thrown in jail. And what this shows me is that even our enemies realize the power of prayer. That if the Jewish people would go up to the Temple Mount and pray. That's it. God would have to answer our prayers. That even our enemies know. The Jewish people could go up to the Temple Mount, but they're not allowed to pray. That that it shows me that even maybe on a subconscious level, our enemies are tapping into the power of prayer. So here is uh, the Western Wall. There are so many teaching, teachings on the Western Wall. My favorite one is why was the why is the Western Wall the wall that's still standing? <laughs> my my favorite teaching is that why is the Western Wall still standing? And we learned from the rabbis that the Western Wall was built from the tithes, which we learn about in this week's Torah portion in Genesis uh, 12 that we read from in the Parsha of Lech Lech of going where God tells Abraham to go, we learn about tithes, that Abraham meets Malchid Tzedek, the king of Shalem, and he gives him the tithes because he was a priest, he gives him his tithes, Abraham from everything that he acquired. And so this tradition holds that this western wall is built from the tithes of the poor. That we know during the temple period that people from all across the world, Jewish people from across Israel and all of the nations would come at different times to bring sacrifices and they would come with gifts and they would come with their tithes. And so some people came with a lot of money or a lot of food or a lot of meat or a lot of animals or a lot of barley or a lot of wheat. But some people came with just a little bit. They're, they were poor. They came with their small bit of tithe. And for them to give their tithes was so dear to God that these poor people are coming and taking part in building the temple with the little they have. They're still giving their tithes. That this wall was most precious to God and he would not let anyone just those. That is the little that people had little that they gave in order to take part in building the temple, that was special to God, that was sacred, and God would not let that be destroyed. So let's go down, we'll go down a little bit more, and then I'm going to uh, end the video for now, but I invite you to tune in. Every Tuesday, I have an, a Facebook Live video on my page, on Yael Ekstein, you could tune in to Yael Ekstein, you could like the page, and then every Tuesday at... Um, I think it's, it's 3 o'clock p.m. Israel time. So I think that's around 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. You could tune in and see live videos from across Israel dealing with all different issues. And sporadically, I'll be coming also outside of Tuesdays at 7 o'clock a.m. to report to you. But here I'm going to show you this beautiful view that is not, not to be matched anywhere in the world. This is the view of Jerusalem, the holiest city in the world, the Mount of Olives, the Temple Mount, the Western Wall. This is where your prayers are going. 
that this is a direct. My father says, yeah, of course you could pray to God from anywhere, but it's kind of like a, a collect call, it's calling from afar. This is a direct call. When you're here, all the prayers we learn from scriptures, from Zion goes out the Bible, from Zion goes out the prayers, from Zion goes out all of the knowledge and spirituality that we know. And this is the sense right here where I'm, where I'm standing. I'm standing on holy ground and you are here with me. So uh, I invite you to sign up for more teachings from the fellowship. We have so many teachings uh, and everything from the Sabbath to the holidays to, to the scriptures to Psalms on every different thing you could imagine. You could sign up to get daily teachings or weekly teachings and you just like this western wall is made from the tithes of the poor. You could have a part in being part of the fellowship. Last year we helped 1.56 million people in need. And we told them it's Christians and Jews who are coming together to help the people in Israel. Just as we learn in Genesis 12.3. How do we tap into the blessings from God? By blessing the Jewish people. By blessing the people of Abraham through Isaac. So I invite you also, your widow's money, $5 a month to join with the fellowship to help the people of Israel as well. Not only to pray, but action every little bit helps. So I'll be posting a link in the comment section. This. Thank you for joining me from here in Jerusalem and from here in Zion. May all the blessings, all the prayers be answered and all the blessings go out to you. God bless you from here in Jerusalem. Yeah.